Hey guys, Quinn here again from Micro Graphics Durban. I'm an application engineer here. So normally I give a whole bunch of tips, tutorials, etc. on Plant 3D, but today we're focusing again on just playing down normal AutoCAD. So that being said, although these tricks are useful for most of the other tool sets as well, well at least the ones that've got 3D sides to them. Now when we are drawing in 3D, uh, one query that I've had uh, time and time again is the difference between extrude and press and pull, because they do function in very similar manners. For instance, if we take a look at extrude on our ribbon, if we're wanting to extrude this out as a wall, by the way, if you're wanting to do a wall, probably better to use poly solid, but if you already got the wall driven over here, it's drawn out, sorry, it's probably better to just use extrude or push pull. And I'll show and I'll tell you the reason being as to why you'd want to use a different one now. So if we wanted to extrude this, we're gonna to have to select both lines. And then you'll notice that when it extrudes, it extrudes both but they are now separate bodies. So in other words we're gonna to have to subtract and we're gonna subtract the inner one from the outer one. Now, here's the problem is that once you've done this, you can't do any editing by using the groups. You'll notice that if we step back a bit, before we've done our subtraction, we could still use groups to resize, where now we can't. Now we are stuck as soon as we subtract to whatever we've got here, and we'll have to use our normal direct editing methods in order to edit this. So that's extrude. If I were to also, by the way, just one interesting thing, if I'm just going to erase this thing that we've made here, you'll notice that it's consumed. In other words, it's used up that base geometry that we sketched with. So you notice this owl, or this weird shape that we've got, that we had over here, which we drew from, it's completely gone because extrude consumes. It takes, it uses that base feature up. I'm going to step back a bit. That we've got our wall there. So now we're going to look at push pull. If I click on push pull, you notice it's RSS select an object or bounding areas. Now, normally the easiest way to do this is just to zoom in quickly close to the intermediary area. So the, uh, the, the bit between the two, so the wall itself. Now you can see both lines are highlighting. Once this is done, or once we've got both lines, we can then click in the middle and then push pull up. So once this is done, you'll notice the command doesn't exit out. If I hit escape, it exits out the command. But now when I select this wall, you notice, hey, look, I've got my grips and I can quickly and easily move this thing backwards and forwards or type an amount, or do any of the other adjustments that we would require. That, by the way, was actually a taper that I was moving by accident. I thought I had a move group. That being said, also, if we were to erase the walls, you can see we still have our base geometry. So if you still wanted to keep it, you could have kept it there. You can also always erase it afterwards. So now you may be thinking, well, why not always use push-pull? The problem that comes with push-pull is that in order, I'm just gonna erase that wall, in order for it to work as it does, it has to, when you hover in the middle there, calculate that internal area. Meaning that if you've got an issue where you've got maybe a, another whole batch of lines running around there, and you try to hover in the middle, can you see what it's doing? It wants to try and break it up. So that's first the it's it's well, first weakness, should I say, that you'd need to have a nice clean internal geometry, or otherwise do it all separately, which may take even longer. Uh, because if you do it separately, then you're going to have to add them all back together again. And your other problem, especially, is if you've got a very dense drawing, you've got lots of elements into it, and it's kind of heavy on the system. If you hit push pull, it can take forever for it to actually calculate the internal area, even if it's 
a complete clean area itself, even if there wasn't any of this, if it was just a heavy drawing. And as you click on press pull and as you're dragging your cursor around, because remember, it's going to try and select anything that's on you. You may have even noticed that if I hover over a face of another 3D object, you can also press pull other faces. Obviously like that <laughs> to some degree of accuracy or you may end up with a weird solution, but it's possible. Just remember that every time it's going over this, it has to calculate that face or that object or that internal area. So by using press pull, you can sometimes align yourself to be sitting there for several minutes waiting for it to work. And then also sometimes it gets a bit twitchy and you can't really get the, the what you want. Also, you've noticed probably that press pull gives you far less options. You do have this multiple, by the way, which means you can do multiple instances thereof. Whereas if we do use extrude, we have got the option to directly change its direction, path, taper, taper angle expression directly from our original extrusion. So basically that's it in a nutshell. Not gonna take it too deep with this, just showing you the differences between it and why you might wanna use one over another. Uh, I personally use push pull quite a bit, but when I see it's going to be a complex object or something like that, and this is more of an eyeballing thing, I'll take a look and say, okay, in this case, it's probably better to use extrude. And then I'd edit the extrusion after that. Okay, right, guys, hopefully this has been helpful. If you liked it, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Cheerio.